it's a business. We can't come out naked. We don't go to work naked. We always tend to mm. wear clothes. And regardless of everything, we are putting in so much to make sure that we do, we give it our best shot. So at this point, we have designers that are being compared to the top designers we have internationally. And this doesn't have anything to do with, oh, because the economy is bad, they can't afford it. No, I think mm -hmm. that we are just struggling to get to that international level. And that is why we are doing so well. And then you can see the product and say, oh, I like this. Where did you get this from? Mm -hmm. And one thing about the designing here locally is that we tend to understand what we want. So when I am designing, I am designing for our weather, our style, mm -hmm. our culture, you know. And that is why we can communicate and relate to the consumers out there and and talking about consumers you enter your your shop or your creative zone yeah. you design the heaven out of everything designable exactly you put it on the stand on 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 the online shop and you want to sell and people just don't want to buy at the price you dictate they want it at such a low price exactly how do you balance that that is why me for instance i do everything I can to make sure that my finishing, I'm very particular about my finishing, mm. is priceless. So even when you tell me that my pieces are quite um, on the high side, because mm. I don't think that is expensive. What is high? We'll define high now. A dress will be how much, for example? The average price for a dress is 25,000 euro. Okay. And this is me incurring the cost of fabric, the cost of production, petrol, Mm. servicing, rent, mm. transportation, trust me, it staff, is staff, and all the other things. creativity, because a whole lot... You can't goes, even put a price on creativity. You can't even... Speak. It's Exactly. So, and then it goes beyond, oh, you're going to the store to pull an outfit. I am very particular about comfortability. I want you to enjoy every penny you have mm. spent on what you, what you, what you, what you, or rather, I want you to enjoy every penny you've spent on my product. So I go as far as testing fabrics, you know, making sure that it's mm. soothing to the skin, you know, and all of those. So when people come to me and tell me that, Jane, I can't afford you, I think you're too um, expensive. Yes, for me, then I just try to convince them, you know, and show them the reasons why it's that. But they always come back mm. because when you have to get that kind of quality out of where you are, mm. it is way more than what it is. And what about exporting what you do? For example, do you, do you find that it pays you to channel your energy towards clients outside the country, earn in hard currency and, and bring it back on with the dollar? The way the dollar is yes, now, it, it is actually, actually makes more sense Yes, it is actually. Unfortunately for me, I tend to have a, a, another line that is the um, Ankara Easy Way. And that is what is appeal, app, or that is what people ask for, hmm. you know, overseas they want an infusion of the Ankara style with the urban twist and all of that so yes it works for me mm. and um, you know by the time you're getting your money back because of the exchange rates you tend to smile at the bank but it ends there it we are t it's not everybody that has that opportunity to sell abroad mm. you know so for my selfish reason yes it is but what of the other hundreds we have one out of 20 being or let me i'm even that's too much one out of 50 that has the opportunity to export goods mm. so what happens I mean, to I, the other 49 and i think maybe that's because i have a friend and i didn't realize this i have a friend who's into um sewing kids clothes and she mm. does ready to wear yeah and she takes it to london yeah and she finds that she sells more of that abroad mm -hmm. and brings the money back home she's just opening a shop very soon to basically put out that. And then I'm looking at the overhead. You know, she's opening a shop. A lot of people like to feel the fabric. They mm -hmm. want to see rather than just go online. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but the, the, the issue for me has always been how, how to strike that balance. And I don't want to go down the road of the government and the very cliched what the government do for it because somehow the industry has been able to get this far without that. But um, after the break, we'll, we'll come back and discuss the business uh, behind styling, behind mm -hmm. fashion. Uh, a lot of events are happening in the country that require their services. And how can you plug into that? We'll be back right here on Robin Minds. Stick around.
Welcome back to Robin Minds. I have Jane Michael in the building with me and uh, we've been talking about fashion, styling, uh, the business behind it and what do you need to do to take it to the next level? Um, we touch on quickly the issue of where the government comes in and I know there's a uh, bank of industry. I know there's mm -hmm. been a lot of uh, facilities put out there mm -hmm. and to a large extent, would you say the government has done enough or the government has done what they can do is now up to those in the industry to do what they need to do to take it to the next level? I would say, well, I don't mean to sound um, ungrateful, but I don't think the government has done enough because the facility that is available for the fashion industry mm. from the government, which is the loan from the bank of industry. Is it only bank of industry that is... Are there any other facilities out there? There that's should the, be that's other the major facilities, one. but I'm talking about the one I know. Okay. And this is only... Um, affiliated to the female fashion designers okay. you know we have a lot of male designers out there mm. who can't tap into this you know so i think did it, that did it help you in particular or well it was I, just it's, I, I believe it's going to help me because i'm in the process of applying for a loan mm. you know yes because i need to expand and that's like the cheapest um um um, returns I've, I've, I've seen, you know. So banks That's are out of the question in terms of loan. And, yes. and I'm sure what got you this far was family, your own yes, sourcing for yes, your own finance. Yes, and yes, what, what was yes. your major source of finance when my you started? My major source of finance was my styling. You know, styling doesn't, um, it, it requires little or no um, infrastructure. It's yes, more of creativity. Yeah, it's, it's more of creativity. Okay. And um, fortunately for me, I was amongst the few um, stylists we had in the country when we started styling. We had less than 10 stylists, you know, in the country at the time we started, mm. as opposed to now that we have stylists everywhere. Is there an association of stylists of some sort? Ironically, we don't even have that. For fashion, for styling, there's no There is body? an association for fashion, but there's okay. no association for, for styling. Mm. And that is why I'm even going as far as opening a, a school of styling. You know, I have that already. And there are just a few things here and there holding it back. Mm. But it's going to kick off very, very soon to help young people, um, you know, teach them how to become stylists and make a living. You know, you, don't, you can't just totally depend on... I, I, and I guess the next question is, can anybody be a stylist? Well, not <laughs> anybody can be a stylist, but anybody can also be a stylist because sometimes you have that creativity in you and mm. you just don't know, you know. So, but when you come around, you will know. And, yeah. But I mean, to, to be very factual, a lot of people are watching now. They are, they work in engineering, banking, they're lawyers, they're doctors. They have this mm -hmm. inner cry to be stylist. Yes. But inner passion very, for inner fashion. Inner passion for fashion. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. But they're very afraid because you can't leave this nine to five to focus on this particular profession that you rightly said doesn't really bring in that much money. And when passion meets reality, mm -hmm. um, bills to pay, mouths to feed, rents to pay, staff to pay, it, it kind of overshadows the passion and it exactly. kills it. Exactly. How, how, how do you think one can go beyond that? If you're not ready to leave every other thing and focus on this, do you think it's worth getting into it at, at all? Well, I think... For an entrepreneur, to be an entrepreneur, you need to be ready to take all the risk. Mm. You know, apart from fashion and styling, even the job you're doing today, you know, you're nine to five. You wake up in the morning, you go, let me use a bank as, as an instance. You go, oh, you yeah, log in and then you're totally <laughs> logged off. And then, so what's the point? So I think life itself is a risk. And mm. you wouldn't know if you don't take that risk. But before you take that risk, you need to be able to secure, you know, a bit of, you know, ask yourself those questions. Why the three W's, I call it the three W's, for who, for what, and why are you doing this? Mm. And then you can find the answers within yourself and help yourself put in some money together. So, and give yourself a time, an estimated time that, okay, between this time and this time, at all, uh, at all, I go feed a cigar, you drink. I, I would yeah. have to probably bring you back in. In theory, this thing always sounds good, but the practical is always so, so, so difficult. But congratulations to you. Um, nine you. years so far, Jane. Really, really wish you all the best. And uh, to each and everyone out there. Uh, thanks to Jane, to Tokumbo, and to Wale for joining us on Robin Minds today. And Thank to all of you out there who tuned in. Join us same time next week, uh, 3 p.m. right here on Channel Television. I am Oscar Onyeson. Have a wonderful week ahead. Bye for now.